So let's talk about section 9.1, and this chapter is about sequences. So we're going to talk about different ways to think about a sequence. So the first way is to think about it as a function, that the domain is the set of positive integers or the counting numbers. So you can graph a sequence by putting in the counting number 1 and saying, oh, for this formula, it says put a 1 in everywhere n is, so 1 over 1. So when n is 1, then I get that the value of the function is 1, and I make a dot there. Now when n is 2, the next counting number, I put 2 in for n, and I get a half. So when n is 2, I'm getting 1 half for the value of the function. And I continue on in the same way and get more dots. And the sequence itself is just these individual dots without anything connecting them. But if we look at the function of x, which is continuous, we notice that all of these dots do fall on that graph. And so in calculus, we can use this graph of the continuous function to do some analysis of the sequence. So we're going to look at how you know how to write the first several terms of a sequence. So if the formula is given that says to find the nth term, you take n, multiply it by 2, and add 1. Then you divide that by 2 times n. So I like to make myself a little kind of like a chart where I say n is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So when n is 1, I kind of put n is 1 in my head and say, well, that's going to be 3 halves. And then you put a comma between the terms of a sequence. So then when n is 2, I'm going to have 5 fourths, comma. And when n is 3, I'm going to have 7 sixths. So after you see the pattern growing, you don't really have to do very much mental arithmetic anymore, because I see it's 3, 5, 7, 9 in the numerators, and 2, 4, 6, 8 in the denominators. So I'm going to have 11 tenths as the fifth term for this sequence for number 18. So for number 20, we have a more complicated formula. It says we have negative 1 to the power of n minus 1. And this is going to have the effect of causing the sine of each term to be opposite of the sine before. So again, I'm going to make myself this little chart of n is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and do as much scratch work as you need to to make sure you get the right answer. So I have negative 1 to the 1 minus 1, which is 0 and then 1 over 2 minus 1. So negative 1 to the 0 is 1, so it looks like my first term is 1. Well, then I have negative 1, this is term number 1, to the 1, oops, sorry, the 2 minus 1, and then times 2 over 2 times 2 minus 1. So I have 2 over 3, but negative 1 to the 1 is negative, so this term has a negative sign in front of it. Then when n is 3, I'll have negative 1 to the 3 minus 1, so that's going to be negative 1 squared, which will be positive, and then 3 over 2 times 3 minus 1. So I'm going to get positive 3 fifths. So then see if you can follow the pattern. The next term will have a negative sign because it'll be negative 1 to the power of 3, and then 4 over 7, and then positive 5 over 9. So that's the first five terms of that sequence. So the next thing we need to be able to do is to find a sequence from a pattern. So analyze this pattern for number 34, and I find it helpful to write the n number right below the term, so I can see how the n is related to that number I'm seeing. So it looks like the n is being doubled, so I'd say the term is 2n, but then I have the sign flip-flopping, so you always either have negative 1 to the n, or negative 1 to the n plus 1 if you have that alternating sign going on, and you just have to figure out which one it is. Because when n is 1, we want it to be positive. So it looks like we need n plus 1. When n is 2, we want it to be negative. So this is the formula for the nth term. 
for this sequence. Okay, so let's look at the next one. And we have one, two, three, four. This one looks a little easier. It looks like the numerator just is the n. And then the denominator is just one larger. So that's the formula for the a sub n from this pattern. Okay, now let's look at number 30. And that has a little bit different pattern. So take your time and think about what you know about numbers. And it looks like the numerator is doubling times 2 times 2 times 2. Well, that's happening because of an exponent. So if I have 2 to the n, does that look like it's generating those numerators? 2 to the 1, 2 to the 2, 2 to the 3, 2 to the 4. Then in the denominator, I'm multiplying by 3, multiplying by multiplying by 3. So that's an exponent that's happening too. So I have 2 to the n over 3 to the n, or that's the same thing as 2 thirds to the n. Either one of those would be fine. Okay, so we need to learn a little bit about factorials because they do come up in these sequences. So it's defined that 0 factorial is 1 and 1 factorial is 1. But for any numbers bigger than that, it's the number times the next smaller counting number and so on until you get down to 1. So 5 factorial, for instance, is 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So we can see that that will come out to be 120. Well, notice that if you have a number factorial, that 5 factorial equals 5 times 4 factorial. So that's going to happen in general. If you have 7 factorial, you can take out the 7, and the rest of the terms will make 6 factorial. So that's just a handy thing to know. OK, so then let's talk about summation notation. And this is the capital Greek letter S, which is a sigma. And it says, start your counter k at 1 and keep going until it gets to n. And you're going to have a formula for how you find each term in this sequence. So for this first example, number 50, it says start with k equals 0. So you might want to put a little 0 under there so you can see what's happening. So when k equals 0, you're going to get a 1. Then it says plus, And now k equals 1. So you're going to get plus a 3. And now k equals 2, so you're going to get plus a 5. And so on until you get to the number n and then stop, whatever that number is. OK, so for number 58, we can see that the sign is going to be alternating. So I'm starting at k is 3. So when k is 3, the exponent is 4, so I'm positive. So I'll have 2 to the power of 3 plus when k is 4, I'm going to have a negative number. So I'm going to have negative 2 to the power of 5 plus, whoops, this is to the power of k, so 4, plus 2 to the power of 5 minus 2 to the power of 6 plus dot 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 plus until you get to 2 to the n. And then you stop. OK, so here's some more examples, because I just want you to have some more practice with how these factorials, I mean, the summations work. This one says, start with i equals 3 and go until i equals 7. So you have 3 squared plus 4 squared plus 5 squared plus 6 squared plus 7 squared. So that's the meaning of that summation notation. Then we also have this one with, it says, just add j when j is 2 and then j is 3, and then j is 4, and then j is 5, and then stop. So that's the meaning of that summation notation. OK, so here's some more examples of sums that we need to try and write with summation notation. So it looks to me like the k is being cubed, and k is starting at 1 and going up to 8. OK, then the second example, we're going to have a, 
alternating sign. So we're going to have negative 1 to the, let's see, it looks like whatever the power here is, the power on the negative 1 is 1 higher. So we're going to go k plus 1, 2 thirds to the k, but we're going to have k go from 1, so that will make the first term positive until k equals 11. And that will give us the same sum as what we're seeing there. Okay, so here's a couple that just ask you to find the sum of the sequence. So this says from k equals 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. Each time we have a 5. So we have a 5 and a 5 and a 5. And it says keep on doing this until you have 40 fives added together, but we know how to add 40 fives together. That says I have 40 copies of five, so that's going to add up to 200 because multiplication is successive addition. Okay, so then let's look at this one. It says we're going to go k equals 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It says we're going to have, when k is 1, we're going to have negative 1 plus 2 minus 3 plus 4 minus 5, plus 6, minus 7, plus 8, and so on, until we get to, oh, these are all subtracted. Sorry, these are not alternating. So all subtracted until we get to negative 24. So this is going to be the opposite of 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus up to 24, right? Because we just, each term has a negative on it. So the clever way to add up 1 through 24 is to notice that if I write the sum in reverse underneath, that I get a 25 and a 25 and a 25 and a 25 and so on. I get a 25. And let's see how many of those are there. There's 24 numbers here. So this one, see, there's 24 25s, so we know that 24 25s is 24 times 25. So let's see, how much is that? If I do 20 plus 4 times 20 plus 5, and this is how I multiply two digit numbers together, I FOIL, and I say 400 plus 100 plus 80 plus 20, so that looks like 400, 500, 600. But that's twice as much as I need because I did two copies of this. So I divide by two and I get 300 and then the answer is the negative of that because we were adding the negative terms. Okay, so that's all we have for section 9.1.